international artists from around the world here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery in Chelsea, so come join me. With this is Ruthie Tucker here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Just amazing art, international artists from around the world. Tell us what we can expect tonight, Ruthie. Crystal, we will have art here at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea. We will have floral, we will have figurative, we will have landscape work. We have an, an outstanding photography exhibit. We have surrealism, we have abstract work. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery prides itself on our international and national artists carefully curated and showing the public a museum curated environment. And we thank our dear Crystal once again and John for filming Amsterdam Whitney Gallery and featuring us on your gorgeous show. And I'm sorry for all of you out there that you can't see how beautiful Crystal Hart is in person. So we welcome you all to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. Thank you. And now we're going to take a little walk around. Yes, indeed. Thank you. With this is Alan Benowitz, all the way from Florida. And North Carolina. And North Carolina, and, and once New York City, am I correct? Did you ever live here? Brooklyn born. Brooklyn born. And photography is your subject. Tell me a, a little bit about what you photograph and, and how maybe has Florida or wherever influenced your uh, work? Well, my subject matter uh, runs the spectrum of uh, landscape, uh, wildlife, people, architecture, and adventure travel. Um, I, I was in a, raised in a children's home and they had a dark room and I was given a, a little spy camera and I took uh, candid shots of the other uh, children uh, with amusing results and then life got in the way and I became a court reporter and then uh, I retired and I'm spending all my time with my photography and it's very uh, redeeming and very uh, gratifying. And tell us a little bit about the photographs you brought here tonight. Ruthie Tucker selected four of my pictures. Uh, one is from uh, Sri Lanka in the Dambula Caves. The next one behind me is uh, called uh, Tulips and Prime from Holland. And the next one is a uh, nightclub dancer from a uh, dinner theater tent with, in concert with Cirque du Soleil and a celebrated chef in Miami in the Miami Design District. And the last one on your right is uh, called Time Warp from Havana, Cuba, Old Havana. And what's next? What's next? Well, I uh, just came back from, uh, as I say, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, and Singapore, and my Asia exhibition is coming up next. And I'll be exhibiting during Art Basel in Miami uh, at uh, Spectrum Miami. And that's what's coming up next. We are in front of the work of the Swiss artist, Nicole Coutre who is astonishing in her uh, treatment of nature and with an abstract beauty and her colorations are worldwide known. She's an international celebrated artist and her works and I wish you could see the beautiful tonalities and her kaleidoscopic color palette of the burnt oranges and the greens that invite everyone to enjoy the beauty of nature and the beauty of landscape work and uh, enjoying the uh, wonderful majesty of our world. Nicole, could you just tell us in a few words uh, your philosophy or just about your painting? My painting is inspiration for uh, <laughs> The spiritual world. <laughs> it's really important uh, for people is um, to share in the, the soul. With us is Jeff Murray, all the way from London, pen and ink. Could you tell us ab about these drawings? Certainly, yes. Yeah. So they're all done with these, many of these, and they're inspired from my travels around the world which have and the art has afforded me the opportunity to go to many places and I'm inspired by the natural landscapes and wonders of the world and I like to draw my journey these aren't for me just drawings they're part of my life and I like to show people through through art uh, how I see the world and how I vision the world so, yeah. now they're, they're very intricate yeah. uh, Tell me, how, how long does it take to, to finish one or complete one? Hundreds of hours. For instance, my big one over here of Manhattan, New York skyline, which I did back in June. Over 27 days, it was close to the 400 hour mark. 
Um, but uh, it's the motivation of the idea behind it. Like I'll have a vision in my head of how I want it to look and that'll keep me going and keep me going. Nine times out of 10, they turn out how I want them to. And just occasionally they turn out a little bit better than I wanted to. So yeah, that keeps me going. That's New York City and then the one right behind you. South America. South America. And this one, you should recognize this one, North America. That's all right. Some people, like if they don't know their geography, understandably, they might not recognize these shapes. But these as well are places I've lived, I've traveled, I've been to, I've explored, and I like prefer to really get into them, not just see the the obvious landmarks, the obvious place, go to the obvious places. I really like to explore the places, go to the natural places, go to the mountains, go to the forests, go to the jungles, go to the deserts, see the wildlife, and then from that sort of in-person, first-hand research, so to speak, that I've then gained, I then like to put that into my art. So yeah. And just tell me, as we look at the United States here, yes. what, what are the, some, I see a saxophone, what are some of the highlights on it? All right, well, the musical instruments are technically the only man-made things that I do put in my work, because as I mentioned before, when I'm doing my pieces, they take a long time. Music is the big inspiration. So uh, we've got a sit, the, the guitar up in Seattle, representing Jimi Hendrix, saxophone in New Orleans for jazz, and piano in New York for New York, New York, Frank Sinatra. I know he doesn't play the piano, but I thought it was a good representation and a piano is a beautiful instrument. But then all the animals and things are in accordance to their origin of location. Eagles, certain animals such as the eagle you do get over a lot of North America, but I figured to have the eagle in the middle was quite powerful. But to please both Americans and Canadians, I have done it crossing the, the border, so <laughs> I didn't want to cause any rivalry, but for instance, Florida's got the alligator, one of two places in the world that does have an alligator. Uh, the Newfoundland dog up in Newfoundland, moose in Canada, grizzly bear in Alaska, all little things in there. And I invite people to look closer into my work because I like to work at such an intricate detail. I'd like to think people could look into it and discover more each time they look. I don't want these to be just something nice that someone would want on their wall. I'd li I, I like looking at my work and I'd like to think the viewer would keep looking at it as well. South America, tell, tell, tell us some of the highlights there. Well, before I knew that the Jaguar was going to be center, originally the main center of attention was actually going to be the Anaconda, representing the Amazon River. But as I, was, I worked from the south going up towards the north, and as I got towards where the Amazon kicked in, I actually wanted a big Jaguar's head. I'd done a piece previously last year of India, and I'd done a big tiger's head in the middle, so I wanted a very similar feel with this one with the Jaguar and then I choose the selected color to give it that bit of a border and a bit of a contrast noticing that this is clearly the central part of the piece but then I choose selected bits of color surrounding it to hopefully draw your eye back to the center if, if possible. And what's next? I'm currently creating one of like the big one of New York but of Hong Kong. I just finished one last month uh, like these but of the entire map of Europe and I'll see wherever else where my journey is, where my heart takes me. But just keep on drawing. <laughs> yeah. I like that pen. Uh, it's a good pen. Many of these pens. Yeah. I am standing in front of the California artist Zoe Ann Fisher, whose landscape reveries are noted worldwide. These are abstract landscapes that are dream works that really extol the beauty of nature, the wonderment of land, and make us feel at one with nature. They're peace, they're harmony, and they are serene. We hope you enjoy the work of Zoe Ann Fisher. May we introduce you to the works of David Emmanuel Noel, a United Kingdom artist and also an architect who is noted for his rhythmic forms and the reverberating beat of his work. You can see the swirling movement, the shapes, and his palette is magnificent with the blues that are cerulean blue. David Noel is also very philanthropic and he's donating a great portion of the sales of his art to a charity uh, that will help feed uh, the hungry children. So we're honored to be featuring and showcasing David Emmanuel Noel from United Kingdom. It is with great pride that I introduce you to the work of Sama El-Hajj, 
Sama is originally from Lebanon, who lives in Sweden. So once again, she represents a cosmopolitan, international point of view. And you can see her outstanding works really reflect a diverse style. So please remember the work of Sama El Hajj. I am excited to introduce you to the works of an outstanding Canadian artist, Yolanta Desjardins. And her last name is very applicable because we see Jardin in it, which is the French word for garden. And Yolanta de Jardin is a master of painting florals and still lifes. And you can see her incandescent colors and the beauty of her work right behind me. So please remember the name of Yolanta Desjardins from Canada. With us, Joseph O'Neill from How New York City with, as Ruthie Tucker said, all these nocturnal uh, photographs. Now tell us a little bit about your work and, and what you uh, photograph. Um, I basically take my camera and wander around Manhattan with my camera at nighttime, daytime, any time of the day and look for interesting spots and pictures and lighting. It's mainly about the lighting. That's all it is. You know. And tell me about the lighting. Um, it's catching light doing something different that people don't ordinarily notice at all. It reflecting off of glass or, or steel or plastic, anything that the light is being reflected based upon. Usually the sunlight, and at nighttime a lot of, a lot of lamp, you know, um, street lights, um, neon lights, that kind of thing. And any part of the city that you'd like to I'd, I'd love. I love Lower Manhattan. I love Wall Street, the canyons, the narrow streets. And then, of course, all the waterways, you know, the East River and the, the Hudson at night. Wonderful. First picture over here is of the uh, pedestrian walkway from the Manhattan Bridge around 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Not a soul was on the bridge but me and my camera. That was it. It was wonderful. It was a nice view. Next to it? Is, that is actually from the tramway entrance to the tram that goes over to Roosevelt Island right next to the 59th Street Bridge. Next one. That is the Q train from the Astoria Street subway station, the elevated train. And the, sun, the lights from the, um, from the subway car are being reflected off the rails. The, the fourth one is the silhouette of Manhattan from uh, Roosevelt Island looking west as the sun was setting. The fifth one is of a building. I have no idea what it is. I just liked the way the sun was reflecting off of it. It was about eight o'clock, about six o'clock in the morning. The sun was rising. I was on the Brooklyn Bridge. The sixth one is of um, from the Long Beach, Long Island. I was a summer vacation. The sun was setting and it was reflecting off the water, the surf as it was coming in. And then a flock of birds just flew in. And the last one is. From Cherry Grove, the beach on Cherry Grove, um, it was midday. I've been trying a new lens. It's a, called the pinhole lens, and it gives it that 1920s, 30s feel to it, that old, like, not crystal clear that you get with the digital cameras that you have today. And what inspires you? New York. New York? I'm, a, I'm a New Yorker. I was born and raised. I, I would rather live nowhere else. Nowhere I couldn't else. live anywhere else. I just love it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Allow me to introduce to you the work of a brilliant Buenos Aires Argentine artist, and her name is Liliana Jacadorian. These oversized abstract canvases are truly, as people say, awesome. Their brilliance, their incandescence, and their luminescence of painterly form are truly amazing. Liliana expresses very warm, deep thoughts from the heart, and Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is proud to be featuring Liliana Jacadorian. I, almost all my paintings um, uh, express my strong feelings. I use uh, visual narratives and symbolisms. Um, the, um, I use to, um, to demonstrate what I feel and everything is about visual narratives. I uh, use acrylics and charcoals and oil pastels. Um, and everything has a, a message. Um, I like that the viewer uh, uh, feel a strong connection with my paintings. The windmill I love is, actually is a windmill. 
and the apart showed a, a couple. Uh, what I want to say through this painting is um, about find the true love and uh, be together. La, we are two and uh, we feel like a one. The tree of life uh, is about family. Uh, the family um, support with a strong roots and uh, like you, you can see they are three people, they are family and they have a strong roots. The name of this one is um, the Genesis, the creation. Um, I try to say through this one that when you uh, have a, child, a child, uh, you try to make like a, a, a work on your child, like you are making a sculpture, and try to give them uh, values and make the best that you can make like when you are making a sculpture. It's like a build a human being. And this one is the third one of a, a collection of paintings uh, that I call Metamor Metamorphosis. Uh, is the transformation of the human being and become a better person. It's the, it's the spin um, and I, I try to say that we, as a human being, uh, live in between of the love and the hate and the fantasy and reality and trying to, to keep the balance in life uh, to be stable. Join me in welcoming the work of Jola Wilk, a United Kingdom artist who's originally from Poland. And you can see her beautiful tones, her vibrant work, the passion that she uh, expresses in her expressionistic paintings, the visceral thoughts, the powerful mind, and her unique artistic vision. Please remember the name of Jola Wilk. With this, tomorrow gettings by way of uh, Russia to Las Vegas to New York City. And tell us just a little bit about why you paint and, and your concept of, of painting. Yes, uh, all my family from way to Siberia, they were artists. So I am in a generation of artists and uh, as much as I remember myself, I was painting and drawing and that uh, art and uh, painting is my passion, but the most uh, passion I feel to the painting the people. Uh, and uh, as my statement, uh, I said that um, I can paint and find in a beauty in any person I paint. Why do you find people so fascinating? Because they are fascinated and they are different. And I'm just trying, it's a challenge to paint the portrait but I'm challenging every time and I enjoy it so much. It's just on the top of my joy when I'm painting. Do you take a photograph of them first or how, uh, how, what's the process? I'm taking a lot of pictures, but if, if subject or somebody I paint available, I like to paint from life, of course. It's the most beautiful painting when you're painting, and excitement when you paint from life. You see more colors, you see more personality, you talk to the subject. And that's absolutely different just to paint from dead photograph. So you need to, to see the person if it's available. This picture of uh, my Dasha, it's a part of my family. Uh, she was 14 years old here, and uh, she is uh, posed me for that picture, a plus pictures, because I live in Las Vegas, she lives in Los Angeles, but she was available for posing. And now this... This is uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, Jack Nicholson, and uh, I think I got his personality. Yes, you did. I will tell you, you did. Just Thank you. This is no other than the famous Marilyn Monroe. Yes, right? it, she is. She also. is. The passion, uh, flower of passion, I titled that painting. And she was like a flower, very vulnerable, beautiful, and weak somehow among that um, man who surrounded her all her life. So I showed her a little bit your passion 
and vulnerability. This is a painting of my friend uh, Coral. It's her daughter. That's what I titled the painting, Coral's Daughter. And she is absolutely adorable little girl. But I decided to paint her a little uh, uh, in Renaissance style, a little bit more interesting than just a portrait. But she has such a big eyes, like like two lakes. So beautiful eyes, and I enjoy so much to paint her. And and what's next for you? Next for me, I keep painting, which I enjoy a lot. I get up in the morning and I'm painting. And also, I have lots of students who follow me, and uh, I'm teaching classes, giving private classes, pub, uh, group classes. But I love to paint, and I'm painting a lot. Thank you. Portraits, most of them portraits. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the works of the Washington artist and architect Robert Gilbert. Right behind me, you can see the, uh, it's a triptych, three paintings combined into one, which becomes a triptych of New York City, Times Square. We're seeing the Lion King. We're seeing the dazzling lights of New York City. We're seeing the excitement, the thrill of being at Times Square. For so all of you visitors who watch the Crystal Heart Show, you can feel at one being at Times Square, and Crystal is wonderful in filming this, and she is featuring and showcasing Robert Gilbert, his nocturnal works of Times Square. May I just introduce my handsome husband, after whom the gallery is named, Ambassador Dr. Alton Lewis Amsterdam. Excellency, the Ambassador, Ambassador Dr. Amsterdam III, International Ambassador at Large for Counterterrorism for 28 years. We're honored to be here, and God bless you all. And we thank you again, and God bless you, Crystal. Thank you. I'm Crystal Hart reporting from Chelsea, New York, here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Hope you've enjoyed the show, and thanks for watching.